I hurried home, throwing open the front door. The stench of death was overpowering. The air inside was thick with rotting flesh. The sound of flies could be heard echoing through the house, coming from the room, our room. I smiled, closing the door and walking through the house, stepping over dried bloodstains caking the floor as the walls were smeared with what was now a dull brown mess. I never cleaned up anything that belonged to my parents. I wanted all of them to be here with me, in the house, surrounding me. I entered the room. Their bodies lay on the bed, mangled and falling apart. The flies formed clouds over them, crawling over them. I didn't know how they were getting in, but I had given up trying to stop them. I'm home, I whispered, setting down John's backpack and grabbing my mom's hand, kneeling next to the bed. I stroked the clumps of her hair, still barely clinging to her smashed scalp. I met someone today, I said, smiling. He's really nice and funny, and he understands me. He says he really likes the way I am. I imagined her smiling at me. It's about time, I said. You deserve someone that can make you smile for real. You haven't looked this happy in a while. So, are you two dating? I blushed. Mom, it's not like that. L let me go get you guys some food. I'll be right back. The day turned into night as I sat on the bed with my parents, eating my share of ramen noodles, holding John's backpack to my chest. The more I thought about him, the more I became obsessed. I took the sketches I had drawn and tacked them up around the room, smiling, imagining our future together. It was about 11 o'clock when I walked outside after kissing my parents goodbye, telling them I would be back shortly. The night air was frigid, but the snow had stopped several hours ago. With flashlight in hand, I began following where I'd seen John walking, hoping that his tracks hadn't been covered up already. Thankfully, it hadn't snowed all that hard and I could eventually start to see small imprints in the snow. My face erupted in a giant smile. John, I whispered to myself. The light in his room was still on. I could see inside, standing in his driveway, bathed in shadow. I watched for several hours. Even after I saw him crawl into bed and turn his lights off, I kept standing there. I wanted to be with him. I wanted him to make a sarcastic comment and make me smile. I wanted to hold his hand. I wanted him to think of me. Only me. Morning came and I woke up in my parents' bed, snuggled in between them. I took a shower, made some eggs for the three of us, and left for the bus stop adding my parents' portion to the ever-increasing mountain of untouched, rotting food. I could hardly wait to see John again. I hadn't slept at all due to the excitement of what he might say to me today. I was giggling with energy when I turned the corner to the bus stop, and my heart seized in my chest. There was John, just as I had hoped, but there was someone standing next to him. Some... girl. Who the hell was she? I saw John's lips move, saying something and smiling before they both erupted in laughter, their eyes locking. I felt a stabbing pain in my chest. She didn't deserve his smile. Did she have any idea how much that meant to me? John looked up and saw me walking towards him. He gave a slight wave as I stopped next to them. Jenna, John said to the girl, this is Sarah. She recently moved in. She'll be taking the bus with us from now on. I choked, my breath catching in my throat as my heart plummeted. With us. Sarah, this is my good friend Jenna, John said. She usually rides the same bus as us. Well, except when she's too lazy to go to school, like yesterday. Nah, nothing ever happens on the first day anyway, Jenna chimed in, defending herself, provoking a smile from John. An indescribable rage started building up inside me, and a feeling I had felt somewhere before began to take hold. I knew this feeling from somewhere, but I couldn't quite place it. It didn't matter though, all that mattered now was this girl ruining everything. My eyes unfocused and I stared at the ground. Why are you here? I hissed quietly. Who the fuck are you? No response. I looked up. Her and John were talking about something, not even hearing me. Then they broke out into laughter again. I balled my hands into tight fists, fighting back tears. This wasn't how it was supposed to go. What about just me and John, just the two of us? talking, laughing together. Us! He only needed to think about me. He sat with her on the bus. I saw her walking with him in the halls. I saw them smile together and it made me want to cry. I was falling into complete despair. I needed to stop this. Kill her. I giggled. It couldn't be that simple, could it? Y yes Yes, it could. Aren't you happier now that your parents are dead? Aren't you all a happier family? Yes. Death had lost all meaning to me now. It was simply another state of being. A more peaceful, happier one. One I could control. We all got off the bus. I had sat with John on the way back home, but all I could do was stare at Jenna. 
imagining how I would do it. My father had a gun, but no, a knife would be better. I giggled to myself. I could feel John's eyes on me, concerned, and it made me happy. After all, this was for him. We all parted ways, each going a different direction. I waited until John was out of sight before I began running after Jenna. Jenna, I cheered, waving both my arms, voice high and excited. You want to come see my house? It'll be fun, just for a little while. W what She stammered, stopping and turning around to face me. I giggled. D do, you, do you maybe want to be my friend? She scowled. To be honest, Sarah, it doesn't seem like you like me all that much. No, I cried. I'm, I'm sorry. People always think that, but I'm new here, and honestly, I'm not all that good at making friends. Her face softened, and she looked down guiltily. Uh, sure, I guess for a little bit, she sighed. I could tell she was just pitying me, but it didn't matter. We walked the whole way to my house without saying a word, but I was too excited to keep completely quiet, and little giggles kept escaping my throat. I knew I was making her uncomfortable, but I just needed to get her inside. We reached the front door and I looked up at her, eyes big and glimmering. I'm sorry, I swooned. My family is preparing raw meat, so it might smell a little bad. I giggled again. Her eyes shifted nervously. Uh, okay, she said slowly. I swung the door open and she nearly fainted, quickly covering her nose and mouth with her hand. Oh my god, she cried. Did you slaughter a freaking pig or something? I warned you, I giggled. Ah, Jesus, and all your windows are closed? You need to freaking air it out or something. Right, I said, thinking on my feet. But I'm a little too short. Hey, uh, maybe you could open one or two. Ah, uh, you owe me big, she said, walking into the house. I shut the door behind us, locking the door as quietly as possible, then running into the kitchen and grabbing the knife I'd been imagining using all day. I slipped it as far as it would go into my back pocket, grabbed my hammer in my left hand, walk back out to the living room to see Jenna staring at the mess on the carpet and the stains on the walls. What the hell? She slowly stammered. Do you want to meet my parents? I said cutely, hands innocently at my sides. She looked at me. I could see the uncertainty starting to build. I swung the door open to her room. Her face drained of color, contorting with fear and disgust. She whirled around to face me, her eyes wide, filled with concern and confusion. I giggled unnaturally, a horrible, strained hissing sound escaping my throat. Sarah, she said, her voice faint and shaking. Your parents, they're... Beautiful, I continued for her. Aren't they? I laughed, louder now. I could feel the situation spiraling out of control, and it made me excited. So excited. Jenna kept flicking her eyes between me and the bedroom with the mangled corpses. Her mouth moved, but she just croaked out nonsense words. What, what the hell? Why are there bodies in your room? Like I'm going to sleep all by myself, I said. It made perfect sense to me, but her face became absolutely horrified, and I saw her eyes shift to the front door, calculating if she could remove the deadbolt in time. I slowly grasped the handle of the knife. I couldn't help myself. The giggles just kept coming, becoming louder and sounding less and less human. Sarah, Sarah, please stop that, Jenna pleaded, her voice trembling with uncertainty. I started stumbling towards her. I finally remembered when I had felt the feeling before, the feeling from earlier that morning at the bus stop. It was the same way I had felt when I killed my parents. I suddenly felt no temperature in the room, no fear, no sympathy, no control, but no lack of control either. It was all just happening, all over again. In my trance-like state, my hand squeezed the knife handle tighter, bringing it out from behind my back, and I began walking towards her more steadily. I wasn't even aware that I was smiling until the corners of my mouth began to hurt. The blade of the knife glinted as I brought it above my head. Sarah, for fuck's sake, don't hurt me, she screamed loudly, throwing out her hands to protect herself. I, I thought we were friends. I stopped for a moment. <laughs> Not yet, I giggled. Slam. I drove the knife straight through the palm of her right hand. She let out a pitiful squeal, her face contorting in pain and terror, unable to scream from shock. She tried to fumble for the knife, but I twisted and wrenched it out, nearly throwing her to the ground. Falling backwards against a wall, her other hand rose instinctively to protect her face, and I drove the knife through it as well, this time slamming the knife against the wall with all of my strength, pinning her hand in place. Face frozen in terror, her eyes were wild and frantic. Her right hand moved to pull the knife out of her left, but her eyes widened as she realized that her fingers wouldn't move crying and hysterically repeating, Please no! Please no! Jenna thrashed around. Her eyes met with mine. 
my eyes, unfocused, gleaming with excitement and joy, hers filled with confusion and terror. You'll never look at John again, I laughed, bringing up the hammer. She said one last word. Please. Then the cold steel impacted her face, just above her left eye. Her structure buckled, bone being forced up through skin as the hammer was driven into her skull. Time and time again, I smashed her eyes right out of their sockets until the hammer embedded itself deep inside her head and I had to twist and yank to rip it out. Her body gave one last small twitch before going completely limp and falling to the ground, wrenching the knife out of the wall. Everything was painted a brilliant dark red, coating the walls in abstract patterns and now forming a glistening pool on the carpet. My own hair was sticky with her blood, and I could taste its warm metallic flavor as it dripped down my face. My smile was crooked and warped. I had enjoyed every second of that. I slowly bent down and kneeled next to Jenna's mutilated corpse, placing her shattered head in my lap. Shh, I cooed, lightly stroking her hair as clumps of it fell out and stuck to my bloody hands. We're friends now, okay? I said. I imagined her looking up at me, face soft and understanding. I've always been your friend, I replied for her. I giggled and hugged her tightly. Her body was still warm. We would be friends forever now. But I'm also John's friend, I suddenly said for her as I realized it myself. Yeah, it wasn't like she would take him from me now. We were friends, and it wasn't fair to keep John or her all to myself. I grabbed a hacksaw from my garage. I saw it all night and well into the morning. I hadn't accounted for how tough it would be once the blade dulled. With my arms burning and a mixture of sweat and blood drenching me, I casually glanced at the clock on my wall to see that I had less than 30 minutes to get to school, not even counting the 20 minutes to get to the bus stop. I shot to my feet in a panic. What if I couldn't see John today? I couldn't go like this. I ran into the bathroom to take a shower when I caught my reflection in the mirror. I stopped in my tracks. A face was looking back at me, but it wasn't mine. A pale, sunken, lifeless form with hollow, dim eyes gazed back at me face caked with blood, its hair thin and wispy, strands plastered together in clumps as a big, unnatural grin split its face in two. As I slowly realized that it was in fact me, the grin faded and was replaced by an expression of terror. I brought my hand up and touched my face and the thing in the mirror did the same. I couldn't believe it. Did I really look like that? What, what had I just done? Had I done something wrong? No, I didn't have time for this. I needed to see John. He wouldn't care what I had done. He would love me all the same. He would make me feel happy. Love me. Just me now. Just me. After washing myself off, I ran to my door, hair still wet, and threw it open before I remembered something. Quickly, I ran back to Jenna's dismembered body and knelt beside it, taking the bow from her hair and tying it into mine. I giggled to myself. I was like her now. John would love that. I ran to the bus stop, but only got about halfway there when I suddenly saw John walking towards me, his face in a panic. Sarah, he cried when he saw me. Do you realize what time it is? I was coming to see if I had accidentally slept in or something. I was pretty sure your house was in this direction, and I was worried. I mean, you were acting really weird yesterday. I blushed. Sorry. Well, it doesn't matter, he sighed. We need to book it if we're going to catch the bus, though. Looks like Jen is ditching again today. As we ran, I smiled to myself. We just barely caught the bus and had to flag it down as it was driving away. We sheepishly walked on as the bus driver glared at us and the kids mocked John. Ooh, they jeered, what were you two doing? John snapped back at them, face going red. We sat down, me and John, together, just like it was supposed to be. But those stupid kids kept on looking at us, asking John questions, intruding in our space. That's when it happened, something that sealed their fate. While John was distracted by some guy two seats ahead, a blonde girl, slightly younger than me or John, turned to me, face red, fidgeting nervously. Uh, I'm Lacey, she quietly stammered. You're... you're not really John's girlfriend, are you? My eyes narrowed, grinding my teeth together, I fixed my cold gaze on her. What's it to you? I hissed venomously. She recoiled and glanced away nervously. Well, it's just, you're really pretty, so I was wondering if I even had a shot with him, is all. No, no, I said confused, slightly taken aback by her compliment. I guess not. Any good feelings quickly dissipated, however, as I saw her face brighten at my answer, a glimmer of hope twinkling in her eyes. Oh, she giggled. That's good. My chest tightened. 
Why couldn't they just leave us alone? Why was everyone always trying to ruin our happiness? Me and John would be together forever. I looked at her tiny face, blonde hair cascading down, her cutesy expression beaming at me. I started to laugh. The temperature of the room disappeared. Everyone's faces blurred except for John and Lacey. I could already see how quickly her stupid smile would change to absolute horror as I ripped her apart. Oh, how she would scream. I kept laughing, louder and louder, head cocking to one side, my vision blurring. I would keep her alive for as long as possible this time. One hammer, one nail. I could make that work. Sarah, Jesus, John cried. Laughs are supposed to be happy, not horrifying. Don't scare the poor girl. His face was joking, but I saw some genuine concern hidden behind his mask. I wrapped my arms around him and pressed us together tightly, laughs now muffled giggles. I wouldn't let anyone take him from me. Look how much he loved me. John recoiled and pushed me away, holding onto my shoulders. Sarah, what's wrong with you? He cried, seriously worried now. He was practically shaking me. The real world suddenly collapsed down on me, the voices and images of people around me flooding into my view as the bus became cold again. Dazed and confused for a second, I quickly regained focus and slid away from John. See? Look at how uncomfortable I make him. I laughed to Lacey, making it out to be a joke. She laughed and John followed along nervously, still unsure as to what had just happened. As everyone got off the bus at school, I overheard one of Lacey's friends whisper to her. So when are you going to ask him? Because if you don't, someone else on this bus will, you know. My heart darkened, fists clenching. A smile grew on my face. And so here we are, where I started my story. Today I will finally be happy. Its tires locked and lost traction as a bus slid forward, barely missing me as it careened into a ditch. I didn't flinch in the slightest as its metal shell whipped past me, coming inches away from my face. I calmly readjusted the pack on my shoulder and walked over to where the bus now lay, walking slowly, taking my time. Prying the doors open, I stepped in, greeting the faces of all those inside. Most were confused, and some even had the audacity to show hints of anger at me. That would change soon. Slowly unzipping my backpack, I lifted it above my head. Curious, everyone stared intently, some even leaning forward slightly. Then I turned it downwards. Their faces erupted in horror as a smile grew on mine. Many turned away to shield their eyes as shrill screams echoed throughout the crowd. Lacey's innards sloshed onto the ground as her mangled head made a solid thud before beginning to roll down the aisle. Absolute panic ensued as everyone scrambled backwards, clawing and climbing over one another to get as far away as possible. Laughing hysterically, I brought up the gun. The crowd screamed again as it glinted against the frozen sunlight. Not bothering to aim, I shot a hole straight through the bus driver's head to my right from point blank, prompting another bout of shrieks as the window was splatter painted red and the eardrum shattering shot echoed throughout the enclosed metal interior. I was laughing even louder now. It was amazing how many times you could shock people into screaming in such a short period of time. Even more amazing was how not a single person tried to stop me. I gave them time, too. I stood in front of them, head tilted, eyes dull, grinning from ear to ear, waiting to see if someone would try. By the time a short, black-haired girl squeaked out, S Sarah, and another kid reached for his phone, I was fed up, and my clips unloaded. The screams grew louder, more heart-wrenching, more desperate, before eventually dying out completely. Then I took out my newly resharpened hacksaw. I had work to do. I sat on top of John, his fingers interlaced with mine, our lips locked in a kiss. His house was stuffed with bodies and pieces of bodies which I had so delicately placed for him. I had just shown everything to him. I had just shown him my true self. For better or worse, he now knew everything I was capable of, of how messed up I had become. But I needed him to accept me for who I was. I couldn't go back to being alone, all alone with the people I had murdered, the people I had killed, mutilated, and dragged into my sick fantasy, my delusion of a family. I needed someone real and caring, someone to tell me that everything would be alright, someone to hug me tightly as I cried into their shoulder over everything I had done, over everything that had gone wrong, over everything I had let go too far. I needed someone who would take me for a walk in the park, or play a card game with me, or even just someone to talk to. Someone to teach me right and wrong, to make jokes and make me smile. Someone to help me. I need help. Dear God, I need help. Would you?
Would you have accepted me after everything I had done? Would you have tried to help me? <laughs>